I would advise you to have somebody take a look at them if your brakes are squealing right now. The 2013 Nissan Titan V8. We're going to be doing a brake job on it today. Uh, I've got some help from the crew here at Common Sense Garage. And so uh, they're going to take the tire off for you right now. We've already got it jacked up and supported with jack stands like we talked about in the previous video. Uh, if, you, if you haven't watched that one, go back and watch it again. Or we'll go back and take a look at it because safety is our top priority here. And it's literally as simple as that. Lug nuts were already taken off, so you just slide the tire out and make sure you lay it to the side somewhere on the edge of the truck or on the ground just so that it's not in your way. Today we're going to be doing a caliper job and brake job all together. We're replacing rotors, caliper, um, and brake pads all at the same time. It's a good idea whenever you're going to change the brakes. Um, if you notice that your steering wheel shakes a little bit to the left or to the right when you apply hard pressure to the brakes, probably means that your rotors are a little bit warped either from riding the brakes too much or uh, just the fact that you go over and have hit the brakes hard and then run over a, uh, a puddle of water in the road and it splashes up. The difference in the temperature of water causes the rotor to actually warp and that's what you're feeling in the steering wheel is the rotor is actually doing that number if you look down the edge of it. And so whenever you press the brakes, that's what you're feeling. So we're gonna replace the rotor brake pads and caliper because uh, the customer said that the uh, these were brand new brakes whenever he bought it and uh, they've only been on there for a couple thousand miles and they're already wore out so we want to make sure that uh, there's nothing wrong with the calipers and we're just changing it all out at one time so you'll get to see and, and tag along as we do that today all right let's see if we can go ahead and get this started So first things first, we need to try and Hold on, man. get the caliper bolts off. And I'll try and get you a picture of those caliper bolts here in, the, in a minute. good idea to support your brake caliper whenever you're taking this off just hang it up out of the way the only bolt these here are your brake pads these were the caliper bolts uh, 17 millimeter on this Nissan Titan you just want to slide them out of the way your brake brake pad just comes off 
backing plates on them. The new one should have all that on there. So what we're gonna do is there's two bolts back here holding this bracket on. We gotta take it off in order to get the rotor off. So they take 21 millimeter bolts, hold them on. Probably gonna want something to give you a little bit of leverage. As you'll see here, hopefully. I thought they were 21. So I told you wrong, it takes a 19 millimeter. for these bolts is 155 foot-pounds we're gonna to be torquing them to probably 130 because I don't have a torque wrench that'll go to 155 130 should be more than sufficient because I'm gonna put a little Loctite on them uh, which is what the manufacturer recommends this is the caliper holding bracket it holds the calipers in place and right there is where it bolts to the backing plate. Slide it out of the way. The rotor may be a little bit stuck. Here's your new rotors. They've got a coating on them, an anti-corrosion coating. Uh, you're going to want to leave that on there, the majority of it, so that way they don't rust as bad. But uh, once we get them installed, we are going to take some brake clean and clean the surface of the rotor because our hands are dirty. Oils from your fingertips will get on them and cause the brake pads not to seat properly. So you want to make sure that you uh, take some brake clean or some lacquer thinner or something and clean the oils and grease off of the rotor itself. And if you're not changing the rotors and you're using the old rotors, then you're going to want to take you some 180 grit, uh, 120 grit sandpaper, and you're going to want to just scuff it up in circles all the way around it because as these rotors uh, get wore, they end up turning really slick, almost like slick like glass, and the brake pad doesn't have anything to grab a hold of. So we scuff the rotors up to cause a rough surface for the, for the brake pads to seat to so that whenever you go to hit the brakes, they'll stop instead of just sliding past it. As you can see on this one, you see the marks coming off of it where it has been sanded from the factory. Uh, just a good idea, go in, go in circles. You know, if you can't, then go, go in cross patterns uh, so that way that the, the brake pad has something to grab to. So we're gonna install these rotors on here now. If you're a shade tree mechanic like us, um, they do have the ability at your local part store most of the time. Uh, NAPA will do it. Uh, some of your local shops will do it. They'll actually turn the rotors uh, to give you a even surface. So where I was telling you before that the rotors are doing this number, whenever they turn, uh, instead of doing that, once they turn them down, they'll be perfectly straight and square. So you can do that. 
that'll probably run you anywhere from 50 to 75 dollars a rotor in order to do that uh, a lot of the shops such as Meineke they can do it with the with the car uh, the brake and the rotor already on the car they have a machine that they'll put up to the wheel bolt it to the wheel and it'll actually turn a little bit of a metal off of the rotor itself to try and make it back square so we got the rotor back on again like I said you see all the fingerprints all the marks on the rotor itself I'm not worried about that right now we're gonna go ahead and try and get the mounting bracket back on <clears throat> there's actually some uh, clips here for your brakes every time you change brakes make sure you change these clips all brake kits now come with new clips and it'll save you a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble because uh, if you reuse the old hardware a lot of times the brakes will end up sticking and you'll wear them out a lot faster than you would if you go ahead and change the hardware so it's a good idea on these bolts uh, manufacturer calls for a little bit of Loctite on them I recommend some serviceable Loctite which is blue in color um, they do make a blue in color that is not serviceable but just look on the bottle of Loctite and you'll notice where it says serviceable and that just means that you can take them back out if you put the red Loctite on them you're gonna have to heat them up to get them back out and you're gonna have a lot more of a trouble the next time you want to change your rotors uh, and you don't want that so we're gonna add a little bit of grease uh, to the threads so that they don't get galled, they don't get stuck in place and then we're going to add a little bit of Loctite to them. I know I can already hear some of you talking to me saying well if you're putting grease on it what are you putting Loctite on it for the grease is merely to help the threads inside to keep them from galling whereas the Loctite is going to lock these bolts in place once they get torqued so this is the Loctite that I was telling you about it's a Permatex brand um, it is serviceable and like I said you don't have to put a lot so the way you apply Loctite just a strip down one side should do it because as you tighten these in that Loctite is going to get smeared it's going to get spread and you won't have to worry about it getting all the way around all of the, the threads so before we do that <laughs> our new calipers come with new bolts new slides it's always good to recommend it that you uh, change these out and like I said these have black black grease on them we're gonna put some grease on the new ones as well and what these do is as the calipers move these pins allow those calipers to slide back and forth so as you as you let off the brake the caliper moves out so that the brakes aren't touching and then as you actually press the brakes they compress and that's what causes the brake pad to touch the rotor and stop it there again like I, like I said before um, it's always a good idea to change out all of your hardware and that includes these every time you change the brakes because you don't know what's going to cause a failure on your brakes and you want to make sure that it's less likely uh, that any failure happens so these here they're very simple they've got a lip on them they just snap down into the lip inside the bracket I guess you guys can see that and so now I'm just going to put a little dab of grease on here and a little dab of grease on here little dab will do you always have your hand, uh, rag handy it'll help you out in the long run 
these just get inserted back in until they snap in and there you go we have new ones put into the brake caliper mounting uh, hardware so now we're going to put these old bolts back in remember we've already got a loctite on them Bolts just screw back in. Oh, you line them up right. Here's a nifty little trick for you. If your rotor doesn't want to stay on, simply take you a couple lug nuts and spin them all the way on, just hand tighten them. They don't have to be super tight. This will hold the rotor back far enough to where you can get your caliper and everything else on and not have any issues. All right, let's try that one more time. back in place we've got the clips back in place we need to put our brakes on now you'll notice on this brake here that it has a what they call a squealer and what that is designed to do is as you as these brake pads wear down there's a point where this will get to this piece of metal and it will ride against the outside of the cal uh, outside of the rotor and it will cause a squealing noise eee! so if your brakes right now have squealing it's either one of two things. Either the pads have crystallized from riding, getting them hot and riding over cold water, uh, a puddle of water, or it's because they're wore out and you need to change them. So I would advise you to have somebody take a look at them if your brakes are squealing right now. And they just fit right in the slots like that nice and neat nothing special about them as you can see now the other things that these brakes have are clips to spread them out a lot of people don't put these on here but the reason that they the manufacturer puts these in the package is so that your brakes don't drag meaning they don't get stuck in the stopping position so it's always recommended that you change these out they're made of uh, spring steel and uh, they fit in two holes at the top of the pad and at the bottom of the pad and they'll spread it out. So usually what I like to do is I'll take and turn them toward the inside and put them on. I'm not gonna put them on right now because it'll spread the pads out past to where the caliper can't get on. So I'm gonna put the caliper on and try and get these both in there. You can always use the caliper bolt just to hold it in place till you get the other clip on. Because a lot of times it's easier just to, to reach up in here and put the clip on. And now we can put the second bolt in. It really is that simple. Once I get them tightened by hand, remember I told you the torque wrench was set to 60 foot pounds. So now this is the brake parts cleaner that we're using. Uh, we're just going to spray it on a paper towel and wipe the rotor down completely.
just want to make sure that all the grease and dirt from your hand is off of it and it makes a heck of a hand cleaner uh, but it will dry your hands out so keep that in mind you may want to wear some gloves whenever you're doing this all right so what peacock's doing right now is he's actually pumping the brakes inside okay. and whenever he gets them to where they're hard we're just going to loosen this up and you hear the air come out of it we're going to tighten it back down all right peacock He's going to, we're going to repeat this process until solid fluid comes out, no air bubbles. Keep that in mind. Solid fluid, no air bubbles. That means all the air has been bled out. Okay. Okay, now we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. So if you don't want to change rotors and you don't want to change calipers and all you want to do is change your brakes and all you have to do is take off the two bolts top and bottom here leave one of the bolts in it and just rotate the caliper up out of the way tie it back with a piece of wire like I showed you here earlier you know, just a just a coat hanger piece of wire whatever you've got it's it's easy enough to do and then uh, pull your old pads out put the new clips in new pads in new springs on it roll your caliper back down you may have to take and, and get you a C clamp or a pair of channel locks or a block of wood uh, or something along those lines to push the piston of the caliper back in. Make sure you pay attention to your reservoir up on top, your brake reservoir, to make sure it doesn't overflow because I've had that happen before. And brake fluid is corrosive. It will eat paint off of whatever it touches. So you don't want to do that. So we got our brake, brakes bled. We're going to put this bracket back on, put the wheels back on it, and go for a test drive down the road and I'll show you that and we'll give you some feedback from Peacock to see if uh, see if he thinks that it'll pass oh yeah I almost forgot uh, there are some rubber caps that come on that were on the old uh, caliper make sure you put those back on so that no dirt dust or debris gets into it because uh, whenever you go to bleed your brakes, you don't want dirt to get trapped inside the caliper because that'll ruin the caliper. So we're going to put the uh, put the wheels back on it real quick, and uh, we'll get back with you then. One thing I neglect to tell you is some of these have a special lug nut wrench for it. Just keep that in mind. Because they are, they do take a special wrench in order to get them loose. So we got the uh, brake pads all switched around, added on, fixed. We got the calipers put on, we got the rotors put on, we got everything bled. And uh, I think I think pretty much we're in the process of driving it right now. Um, so we're just gonna, we're gonna drive it, seat the brakes because they need to be seated and uh, we'll get to uh, about 35 mile an hour, hit the brakes real hard down to about five, and then we'll, uh, we'll repeat that three or four times and then drive it around five, 10 minutes, let the brakes cool down, and everything should be good, should be set. So what do you think, Peacock? You think that's gonna work? I think it's gonna work. All right, well, you've seen it here. Brake job, rotors, calipers, brake pads, and uh, bleeding the brakes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully somebody will find a little bit of help out of this. And uh, we're on our way now. 
to see if we can't get ourselves a battery. So I'll probably film a little bit of that and then we'll see what we can do. Talk to you on the next one.